In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate this Mass, let us first take call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look kindly, Lord, we pray on the devotion of your people, that those who by self-denial are restrained in body may by the fruit of good works be renewed in mind. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, set out for the great city of Nineveh, and announced to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh, according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took about three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day's walk announcing, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast, and all of them great and small put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Then he had this proclaimed through Nineveh by decree of the king and his nobles, neither man nor beast, neither cattle nor sheep shall taste anything. They shall not eat, nor shall they drink water. Man and beast shall be covered with sackcloth and call loudly to God. Every man shall turn away from his evil way and from the violence he has in hand. Who knows, God may relent and forgive, and withhold his blazing wrath, so that we shall not perish. When God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spur. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spur. Have mercy on me, O God, in your kindness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spur. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spur. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit. A, humble a heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it, except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with men of this generation, and she will condemn them. Because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, our Gospel reading today is really quite interesting because it really speaks to the heart of the crisis of faith that continues even to this day. We read at first that the crowds wanted a sign, and Jesus says, This evil generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given, except the sign of Jonah. What kind of sign were the people looking for? Or what kind of sign are the people looking for today? Now, I often ponder this. What would it take for a mass conversion back to mass? back to the sacraments look like? What would it look like for everyone who proclaims to be Catholic to actually live and practice the faith according to what God has given us? What kind of sign would it take? And I really wonder this because there are many options. You know, it could be some catastrophe in our country of some kind, natural disaster, some evil from abroad or within, mass illness? <laughs> what kind of sign is it going to take? And I think the reality of what Jesus is telling us is, even though people seek a sign, a sign is not going to help. Now, I remember when I was in high school, in middle school, I used to say once in a while that I wasn't sure if I was called to be a priest or not, that I was waiting for a sign. I was waiting for God to make it really clear to me. That never happened. What happened was a gradual growing closer to God and a gradual awareness of the vocation he had for me, and also the awareness of the acceptance of the church and the openness in the church to have me discern to be a priest in the seminary. It wasn't some huge, big sign, rather a gradual relationship that grew with the Lord Jesus, a love for the church, a love for the faith, and a realization of who I was being called to be. Granted, I had a choice. I knew I had a choice either way but it was that gradual movement. And so a sign was never given to me, and looking back now, I, I see that, because if my vocation was based on a sign, I'd just be a thrill seeker, looking for a bigger sign, a bigger experience, a bigger this, a bigger that. But a vocation based on relationship, God willing, stands the test of time, at least it has for the last 11 years, and praise God it will more. It's even seen me through this doctorate. Praise God for that. But here, Jesus does give some evidence. And the evidence he gives is Jonah. And that there's something greater than Solomon. And see, this is really important. Because oftentimes, for our conception of God, all we can do is to shoot higher than what we already know. That God is more perfect than any perfection that we know. God is more loving than any love we know. God is more powerful than any power we know. God is greater than the greatest thing, the greatest person we can imagine. God has in store for us greater things than we have experienced in this life. And so we make this analogy greater than what we have experienced in order to get at least in some kind of a ballpark of who God is and what God has in store and what God is all about. He is greater than we can possibly imagine. He is more perfect than we can possibly imagine more loving, more merciful than we can imagine. And this is what Jesus is leading them to. Just like Nineveh was saved by the repentance, God's mercy is greater than you can imagine. God's judgment is more just. Just like Solomon was the wisest, you ain't seen nothing yet. Just like Solomon was so rich and so prosperous, you ain't seen nothing yet. And my brothers and sisters, as we come into this Lenten season, it's a time for us to really heighten our own enthusiasm, our own hope, and to really look at how God has called us. But are we people 
who seek a sign? Are we passive, waiting, saying to God, no, you need to do this or you need to do that before I move, when really God has given us everything to move, God has made it so possible. So my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Mass together and pray this Mass together, let's pray in a special way that we will not be passive in our faith but active, but that we will seek the Lord. We will seek the Lord with great hope. We will seek the Lord to allow our own conceptions to be blown, if you will. And that versus seeking a sign, we may seek relationship. And in seeking relationship, we may truly know the greatness of God and the dailiness of our lives. God bless you. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass, let us offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities that we will be ever more faithful, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, that they will know Christ's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our prayer community, our own families. We pray that all of us may help each other to not seek signs, but to seek God and who he truly is for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. Help us to be people who do not seek signs, but to seek you. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, at my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, that what you have given to be dedicated to your name, that just as for our benefit you make these gifts a sacrament, so you may let them become for us an eternal remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, 
by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Francis of Rome, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing hope. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give countenance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That the verse, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, O Lord, be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worried that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who never cease to nourish us by your sacrament, grant that the refreshment you give us through it may bring us an end in life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you may notice that's a little light out today. I'm only here about an hour and a half earlier than I normally am. But it's amazing the difference an hour and a half can make on daylight. So anyways, I hope you all have a wonderful day. We'll definitely be in touch. God bless you.